Hello, hello. Welcome to the Babylon Balkan show, the first and ever infotainment uh, podcast in, across the Balkans, not individually, but across covering all of them, all of us. Uh, welcome, everybody. We are here with another episode. In this episode, we have a very inspiring person. Uh, she's, Indeed. I, yeah, I'm very curious about her and listen about her life. Uh, she has a degree on Yugoslavian literature. Uh, during her, during her career, she worked with she worked in a lot of uh, different jobs. Then she decided to be traveler and travel around the world. And now she is a traveler, blogger, writer, and yeah. She has been traveling for like 12 years or so. Uh, and by the way, fun fact, uh, she is the first person on our podcast uh, to have her own Wikipedia page. Yeah, <laughs> that she didn't make yeah. uh, so by some other people, but really cool thing, uh, at least from our point of view. As said, she is a traveler, blogger, uh, has been doing this for quite a while, visited a lot of interesting places. Uh, she went by bike, also by foot. So we hope to hear uh, about her experience as a woman from the Balkans. It's a unique thing to do, especially having in mind the culture where we live in, uh, how she, she managed to break out of it and her experiences, both bad and good, the approach to life, etc. It's going to be an interesting ride on it. Yeah, definitely. So without further ado, let's start the episode. Let's go. And here we are back with our latest guest, uh, Snežana Radojčić. Uh, welcome, Snežana. We are very happy to Thank have you here. You. Hello, welcome. Thank you for offering me. Thank you. Nice to see you guys. Before we start going deep dive about your life, about your experiences, we want, want to know for us and for our guests, uh, where are you right now? Uh, in Mexico, southern part of Mexico on the Pacific coast. Uh, in one small town called Aqua Blanca. It is between two very fancy cities for holidays, holiday cities, and for Americans, they're very, very, uh, very interesting places. They come there because it's cheap for them and beaches are amazing. And I'm just resting here, <laughs> nothing special. I'm resting and preparing for next leg of my tour. Awesome. Thank you. Then we will also like to like uh, make a, a little bit of intro that's not related to you, the topic that we are here today. Just like to soften up the the material, so to say. In every episode, I ask some you know icebreaking questions to my, uh, to our guests, uh, not about the general topic, but about themselves. And my question is. Uh, what is the top three things on your bucket list if you are, ha, still have something? <laughs> ah, that. Huh. <laughs> That's a good question. I would like to, when we talk about traveling, I would like to go to Kamchatka, this Ooh, part nice. northeast in Russia. Mm -hmm. And also I would like to see Madagascar. They are like exotic places and I would also like what is my dream since I was a kid uh, to own a little hut in the mountain somewhere in the world and to live there. It ah, must be some river. In the one region of Turkey. It doesn't matter. Never we can live, yeah. Ah. I'm dreaming about that. Since I was a kid, yeah. That's absolutely opposite of traveling. <laughs> but if I yeah. settle down somewhere, it will be like... And I hope I can make that dream come true. That's amazing. 
Mm-hmm. Talking about dreams, we are coming to my uh, icebreaker question that you usually like to to ask our guests. Uh, what did you want to be when you were little? Uh, actually, when you when you grew when you grew up, but yeah. Uh, I wanted, yeah, I wanted to be. That's interesting because I was thinking about that uh, many times that we actually ended in our life uh, doing what we were dreaming when we were kids, what we were playing actually when we were kids, you know. I mm-hmm. was playing always to be teacher, <laughs> <laughs> and I am teacher, I mean, I am professor of world literature, I've been working in school, and somehow what I'm doing last 12 years, it's also kind of teaching, you know, I learn and then I share what I learn with, with uh, people who follow me, uh, but I wanted to be a writer, what I am also doing now, I think, uh, I wanted to be a writer and to live in as he said, <laughs> in the mountains or in the wild, to be isolated out of all systems and uh, with almost no connection with, with cities, with, you know, civilization. And then only when I publish some book to come in civilization to meet ah, okay. people and readers and that way. Like that. Do another podcast. Need. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Do you feel like you're living the dream or going towards the dream? Um, I... It is. Looks like it is. Yeah, it is. But in a modern uh, interpretation, of... <laughs> because enough. in time when I was kid, it wasn't like social media and stuff, you know. Uh, but now, if you want to compare that, I am kind of isolated, of, you know, people. Although I meet people every day, but yeah. They are not real relationships, you know, mm-hmm. because it's just temporary. And I am writing, I live off my writings mostly. So, in a way, I'm living that way. I'm mm-hmm. just not in one place. What turned out is actually much better for me <laughs> because I discovered that I love traveling and moving. Which was not the case in the beginning, or? I never actually like it to travel. Really? I never wanted to travel. Oh no, till my forties. <laughs> what happened? I, yeah, th- that was like you know, uh, distance between Belgrade and Novi Sad is like eighty kilometers, and we usually, my friends, they usually went there uh, for parties, for you know, going to some nice clubs and and so on. And when they offer me to go with them. They they had to tell me that two weeks in advance, so I have to prepare myself <laughs> physically. <laughs> Why I would leave Why would go anywhere? Because in that time, I was occupied. You know, I, I was I'm actually person from from libraries. Uh, uh, my books, my work, you know, my work, and only like spiritual travelings and things like that. But they always uh, liked it to do outdoor uh-huh. and. I always was, I was scout when I was a kid, then later when I graduated, I asked my parents to buy me a bicycle. In that time, good students, they got like, you go, you remember, you go, you go, you go, <laughs> car. You go car. Yeah, they, yeah. That was like common gift for if you graduate in the 90s. <laughs> and no, I, want, I didn't want car, I wanted bicycle, so it, it gives me like, Bicycle gave me independence and that feeling of freedom. And then in the beginning of, of this century, I discovered a group of cyclists, recreative cyclists, uh, who are traveling by bicycle, you know. They are, but not real traveling, they are going for weekend tours. Okay. So that was first step. Uh, then, of course, I was a uh, member of uh, three or four different mountaining clubs in Serbia and almost every weekend I went to some mountains you know to climb or going or I, I went with, with uh, my friend new friends from that cycling world and then somewhere 26 or something like that uh, I I discover uh, warm shower what is community online community uh, like couch surfing couch okay. surfing is for common travelers while warm shower is especially for psychotherapy. And I start hosting some, yeah, hosting some people 
could travel, you know, uh, to the Belgrade. They and because I have my apartment, and then I listen to their their stories, you know, and also uh, I, I had one friend. He's a guy who made, you know, maybe that we have in Europe Eurovelo cycling paths. There are thirteen big cycling paths, and they 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 are going through it. Uh, the, the most beautiful areas in Europe. Uh -huh. We have Eurovelo 6, what is Danube route. Danube, follows yeah. Danube, yeah. From stream till Black Sea, but the most interesting and actually the best part is that part going through Serbia because we have Jeddah and all that, you know, is amazing. And that, uh, my friend, he actually uh, uh, made that tour because he's working for that organization in Germany mm -hmm. and he put all that signs you can see like with, with uh, nice sentences, smart sm sentences about life, about you know, living okay. every single moment and so on and we are good friends. I, I actually become friends with him in 2067, something like that. And then he made a lot of tours, like big tours for three weeks, like in Mongolia, the Gobi Desert. And that was for me like miracle. Wow. It's possible to travel in that way. <laughs> and then I start thinking how to connect my old wish to be independent, to leave of my writing, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, to be out of the system. You know, stuff just fit because you know. Okay, the cheapest way is to go by bicycle. You love cycling, so it's great. If you go around the world, you will have all time. You can complain. I don't have time for writing. I have to do some <laughs> stupid job. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of that and things like that. Independence. So, yeah, absolutely independent and a lot of material. Even if I just write what's happened, it's already interesting. So, no more excuses why I don't do what I love to. Do. Yeah, <laughs> you you write books as we know, and you also write blogs. So all of the people that are interesting can read about it. It's mostly in Serbian, but it can also be translated in English. So it's available for all of our yeah, Balkan some, audience. Yeah, three books are translated into the English, and you can find them on Amazon. Great. What are the name of the books? Uh, one is Well Me Around the World, the second is Crossing Himalaya, and third is, I think, Cycling Gobi Desert, or is Cycling Himalaya, Crossing Gobi Desert, or something okay. like that. But they can type my name. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we, we'll definitely put the links uh, for your site, uh, for your books, so people that are interested can buy, can also support you, so don't worry about it. You know, starting something like this is... All of us can imagine, all of us can think about it, but putting it in action <laughs> is never a thing for us. Uh, how was that moment was that? when you decide you sell everything and st start to uh, start this journey? Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually the biggest uh, step we first make here yeah, in the brain. <laughs> mm. When you decide that in your sure that you decide it's like you just uh, break some you have to break some boundary in your your path yeah. mm. you know because i was dreaming about that like planning not dreaming planning like two or three years before i took the road and everything seems impossible for me because i didn't have any experience in traveling i don't found that short course for two three days uh, so no experience in traveling i couldn't imagine that as a lone woman i could travel yeah. Yeah. i yeah, thought if thing. i'm a man i will start immediately but as a woman i cannot start <laughs> or if i have sure. money i could start i could start immediately but i didn't have money and then i put big effort for two three years to find uh, like money or to find company like uh, companions <laughs> to travel with uh -huh. and then I of course asked it first my friends from that world but nobody you know we are 
poor country. Uh, nobody first have so 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 has uh, enough time for that because plan was like two three years to be on the road. Uh, what is uh, like average time to travel the world? It's so about forty thousand kilometers, and usually people do that in two three years. And my idea was to do that and then come back, right? To write book and become celebrity. <laughs> 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 and Fair enough. Back. That's honest. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. who would not like to do that? Like American dream, right? So, exactly. Uh, then no, no, so I couldn't find any any friend to do that. So I put ads. I found like some groups, uh, foreigner groups, and there is uh, one uh, very famous portal among cyclists, touring uh, cyclists. Uh, the name of that portal is Crazy Guy on a Bike. And one section is uh, like looking for companions, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, you put whatever you want. Like you want to sleep in hotels or you want to do wild camping. You, you want this religion. You want, uh, I don't know, straight, gay, whatever. Uh, gender, you know. Very and I detail. put... Yeah, and I, I put just, I, I was looking for, my idea was to uh, make a group of four people, three, four people, uh, who will travel, like, on budget, very, very cheap, uh, for two or three years. Yeah. And then people start response, and first they respond some Americans and Canadians, you know, they were retired. And we started, that was nice chatting, but very, very quick, it's turned out what is cheap for them is not cheap for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when guy told me, oh, I'm coming to do Danube tour, it cost me $100 a day. He said, what? <laughs> $100 a day with budget for one. Thank you, but no thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then it seems like no way to find. And, but I had luck. Uh, one day I, I found in my spam folder, but I never checked before. I don't know why I checked that time. I found the mail from one guy. He's uh, from US, and he was about my ages. And he made uh, he he messaged me very short uh, message uh, like, uh, "He, I am Brian. I did a lot of tours by bicycle. I have big experience, and I all my life I was dreaming to travel around the world by bicycle." And he had, he said, I have, I collect money. I don't have any obligations, but I want to find a cycling uh, and emotional partner before we start together. And okay. I, I said, oh, come, on, come on, this is crazy. I mean, it's hard to find emotional partner in ordinary life, you know. <laughs> and you know, not two in one. To... You want it two in one. Yeah, yeah <laughs> two in one, two in one. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> He put, uh, that's what I, I, I make jokes about that. He put links, link for his gallery on Flickr, you know, mm -hmm. and I click on that and I say, okay, maybe it's not so crazy idea. <laughs> so <laughs> huh. We start chatting and, you know, Skype and how is that going? And then he came in the March 2011. Uh, I pushed him to come to do a test tour, to meet in life. You cannot travel the world with someone you never met before. Like a test ride for, with a car, you know, buy a new car, you want to see how it goes. So. <laughs> <laughs> someone said in one show when I told this story, it's like reality, you know? <laughs> You're suddenly with some person 24 hours. You never met before that person, and yet now you have to share your life. Yeah. And in extreme conditions, you know, you cannot, if you are sick of that person, just to leave home and go somewhere and come tomorrow, or go to a restaurant and get drunk. You can. Yeah. You have to be all the time with that person. It's so a survival, did. survival reality then. Yeah. <laughs> we spent like two weeks uh, cycling Sicily, and of course, we fall in love and blah, blah. And then we nice. decided to get. And he just uh, went back to just sort out his things. And I also came back to Belgrade. And in July 2011, we started from Bratislava in Slovakia because he had 
uh, the cheapest flight there to, to mm -hmm. I think, to mm -hmm. check. And then he crossed there. I took a bus and from Slovakia we started together. But then um, after eight months, we just broke because it was like impossible. We had many problems from the very beginning, of course, okay. because it's really hard to travel with someone, someone you don't know, you know. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's already hard for itself, itself to travel that way mm. because you have a lot of challenge uh, and you don't know that person, you're from different cultures, uh, you speak different languages, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm. So it was really hard then. Still a, a brave move from your side. You, mm? Brave move, move from your side. It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but that was, uh, you know, uh, a long story in short. Uh, we helped in the end. I, of course, I was angry when he left me, you know, when I still because I love him. And so I felt like, oh, come on, I cannot uh, continue by myself. Uh, but after all those years, uh, I realized that actually we helped to each other because he had some something is in his private life in his previous marriage. What he wanted to move far of that, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he needed also someone to push him because he didn't have enough energy by, by himself to do that. Okay. On another hand, I needed someone who has a lot of experience. Uh, someone I could trust to, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, someone just to teach me, I mean, you know, to be with me, you know, in the beginning. And then, uh, after, and then also a uh, second issue I mentioned, it was money. I didn't have money. And at that time I was like freelancer. I, I'd been working before in insurance companies. But they left them, and then I, I came back to my profession working like editor for publishing companies. Then I was selling properties, you know, a lot of like service. <laughs> used to do a lot of different jobs, you know. It's a bulk thing, so yeah. yeah. Bulk thing, yeah. And uh, so I, I didn't have any savings, anything. But they have that small apartment uh, from my parents. They died 20 years ago. And uh, that was after economic crisis uh, in 2008, you know, mm -hmm. and prices were very, very low. So I rented that for 150 euros, and that was all my incomes monthly in the mm -hmm. beginning. And, uh, okay, it was enough with brands money, my money. You know. Psycho travelers usually spend like $10, $15 a day because you don't pay accommodation, you don't pay for mm -hmm. transport, uh, you cook on stove, you sleep in tents, so mm -hmm. it's very cheap traveling. And then when we broke, it was in Turkey in the beginning of 2012, when Bran left me, uh, I was in Antalya and it was of course very hard and all my friends, uh, they messaged me like, come back, it's not a good time to continue, you know, they had a lot of stereotypes, I'm sorry for this, but No, we're here to break them Yeah, they told me like, I think it's good to talk about that uh, they told me like, are you crazy they're Muslims, they're gonna rap you, they're gonna, you know do this or do that but then I decided, okay, I mean, uh, I wanted to do this before Brian, and it doesn't connect it with him. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, if it wasn't Brian, it could be anyone else, right? So that's my dream, and I want, don't want, if I lose my man, I don't want to lose my dream. So I decided to continue. And then what's happened? It's happened, uh, I have first to say that Balkans, particularly Turks, and also uh, Israeli people, no Israeli, Iranian people, people from mm -hmm. Iran, uh, they're famous in traveler world like the, uh, by their hospitality. So uh, I expired for next two months and I didn't cycle in touristic areas, I cycle countryside, you know, I turned from Antalya, uh, from, uh, what is the name of the city I mentioned, uh, Antalya. To the coastline city. Uh, Alanya? 
No, no, Alanya. Uh, is it in the south or on the Mediterranean side? The Mediterranean side. Uh, I, oh, I just I mentioned before. But okay, uh, mm -hmm. I, I turned to Konya and then, you know, central Turkey and then I cross up to, to Black Sea coast and then I follow a bit coastline to, to Georgia. So uh, altogether, I spent two months in Turkey and it was winter time and it was very cold in mountains. And for two months, uh, I, I'm not sure, did I pitch my tent maybe six, seven, but less than 10 times. Because all the time people offer me to stay in their houses. Twice it's happened that they found me and uh, in front of their hotels or, you know, private Airbnb or something. And they just gave me room for free. No, any, you know, in exchange, anything in exchange. Amazing. Also, I found, I learned that in, in villages up in the mountains, uh, they, uh, they still exist like um, houses, places for, for uh, visitors, for travelers. So you come to the village and you find a uh, chief of that village. And they have a uh, separate house for the guests uh, with all you need. And all village care about you up to three days. You know, they bring you food, everything for free. Firewood, everything. It is typical. And that, that's in countryside in Turkey. And then I, you know, I wrote a book. My second book, book from the road was about Turkey. It's called Nomad. Mm -hmm. And. I found I was thinking about that because, of course, I visit a lot of caravanserais in, in Turkey. And on caravanserais, uh, you still have, you, you can read on some caravanserais, like guests can stay up to three days for free. And then I read about that. That was in time when Sultan, you know, care about all that caravanserais. And he provides a secure area for all caravans. But up to three days, they could stay if they are not sick. If they are sick, they can extend their staying because that was a lot of, of course, caravans and, you know, Americans in that time. And so that tradition is still alive in, in villages, in that small houses for hosting. And that was amazing for me. Then people found me like, I wanted to pitch somewhere tent, and they said, no, 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 you cannot stay there, it's not safe, come with us, you know, or... It also doesn't sound I... safe, to be honest. Yeah, don't stay there, come with us, it's, as a stranger. No, it is. no, you learn on the road, that's what they learn also. It's a cultural difference. But, yeah. mm -hmm. No, people, first, you uh, learn to trust your intuition, you uh -huh. know. Uh, because you see, you have to decide. That's happened with all uh, solo travelers or travelers in one of alternative ways, like cyclists or hitchhikers, especially female hitchhikers. You have 10 seconds, 20 seconds to just uh, decide. <laughs> yeah, could you trust that person or no? And it's never wrong. Because you can read on people's faces, you know, it's hard to explain that, to describe that, but anyone who travels knows that. Because uh, you see how they just get the idea, and you see on their faces that it's nothing wrong, nothing bad, nothing, you know, of course, you have to be very careful to have common sense. Like, I, I won't accept offer in the middle of nowhere from one mm -hmm. person, you know, because it could mm -hmm. be dangerous. But mm -hmm. if couple, old couple offer me to stay yeah. in their apartment, of course I will trust. Or if uh, around a lot of people who witness that, that's probably safe because the principle is nobody to see you or everybody to see you, you know. Mm -hmm. So, or, or three sisters, for example, they gave me keys of their summer house you know of course in turkey yeah in turkey and my book is about that 
And no, then uh, people <laughs> in Turkey, I yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're famous, you know. I even because I, I was one month with Brian traveling Turkey in the beginning. Yeah, Antalya is name of the place where we were. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not Antalya, it's Korea. Okay, that's uh, we were cycling from Bodrum together because we took a ferry from uh, Athena to some island, Greek island, and from that island to Virich. Turkey, and then we cycle for one month together, and that we we make jokes because Turks, you know, they're outside and they're drinking a tea all day, <laughs> and we think they drink coffee. No, they drink tea and yeah. try, try, and then always they offer. And they're mostly men, you know. And when they see traveler, they're so happy. They offer you try, 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 and if you accept that. Then you come to one family, you know, and then they offer you, of course, to eat something. And then somehow you talk with them and they then ask you where you're going to sleep this day. And you say, I have no idea where you're going to So, Oh, no, 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 you have to stay here. <laughs> and then you stay there. And next morning they are already on the street, you know, and you leave and then neighbor offer you, try, try, and you stop and you never move, actually, in Turkey. And we made jokes, if you accept all offerings, you know, you will never travel in Turkey. <laughs> it's crazy. In one place, they call me. I think a friend who married a Turkish woman, uh, he lives in Bodrum. They live in Bodrum. And she was, they hosted me, of course, there. And I, I was uh, about to reach Karaman, what is already in countryside. Mm -hmm. And they call, uh, she called, uh, like, youth organization in Karaman, something like that to ask, do they have any campsite? It was winter, very cold. And they said no. And she became angry. She's for, uh, sh she was a uh, university teacher. Or, you know, she has authority, yeah. you know. <laughs> and then she asked him, why you don't have, you know who are coming? Is it your place? You have to find solution for that lady. She is famous in Serbia. Blah, blah. Of course, it wasn't true. <laughs> Yeah, but she was really upset. Where are you going to sleep? Because I didn't have money. And then they organized, they called the president of that, re of that uh, city, you know, uh, government. Yeah. And then they provide me like hotel room, residential area for guests. And they mm -hmm. call journalists, TV, cars, and, uh, and then uh, even president of that city, he, host, uh, he offered me <laughs> to me in, in his cabinet, you know, and that was behind, that was huge uh, poster of Ataturk, you know, and we were official, like, shaking <laughs> hands, you know, journalists. And then, when I left that city, they organized, like, uh, cars to follow me. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, one guy started following me, and then I complained, I don't want to, to listen, you know, like, motors all the time, I want to be <laughs> in the nature. And it was hard, really hard to, to stop them doing that. Then uh, he called next uh, place I, I was about to reach. And then they uh, also wait for me, like, you know. Red carpet and everything. <laughs> oh, my God. That was really, you know, uh, it, it was like we, we have that in Serbia, similar. You know, when, when, yeah, when you know. people. I know some yeah. stories with Palma, exactly. with the uh, local yeah. mayor. Yeah. When <laughs> you come familiar. somewhere and then, uh, you know, oh, take this, take this, and you go somewhere, you have to take, uh, you know, everybody care about it, and in the end you pray that, okay, please, let me go, let me go. <laughs> <laughs> I really respect you deeply, and I'm so, you know, thankful for your hospitality, but they have to go. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you became part of a comfort zone, although you left the comfort zone and you're suddenly yeah, inside yeah. of it. Not asking, yeah, and but then listening. I realized, yeah, and then I realized thanks to Turk, Turkey, and thanks to Turks that word, what I use now to, to repeat, uh, that uh, the word is much better place than, than believe, and then media want us to believe, and that I will find always like good people, and I could do that by myself. And mm. I, I was thinking later, because uh, in some uh, Far East countries, it's not really common uh, to 
their hospitality in another way, they're kind in another way. But mm -hmm. it's not common to offer you to stay in their places. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes because like in Japan, they live in very small places, they don't have enough space, or it's mm -hmm. just not culture, you know, it's different yeah. culture to, to allow someone to come in, in, into your private space. Uh, but if I was in country like that, I, I would probably find that it's really hard to travel alone. But uh, thanks to that what I experienced in Turkey, you know, I, I, I got new hope. Okay, we're this great place. People will always help me, somehow like that, wow. you know. Of course, I didn't count that people will help me, but... I realized that I can do it by myself and it's not dangerous, that nobody's going to rap me, doesn't matter mm -hmm. which religion is that, you know, things like that. It gave you confidence that you can continue the, your trip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Did you get... Uh, I, I, yeah. No, please continue. No, I just want to repeat that I really believe that's thanks to, to that hospitality because people were so kind to me, you know, they really put big effort to help me. Because they, they, I realize that they see traveler. They don't see like a lone woman or something. You know, they have to like to take advantage of me. Mm -hmm. They, they see me like someone they could help, and they help me because they are good people, and good people are everywhere. Mm. I didn't have sure. for twelve years on the road. I had less than ten bad experience uh, of that ten. Over 50% doesn't have anything with my gender. It will happen also to men. Maybe mm -hmm. only three or four unpleasant experiences were just because I am woman. On other, it could happen to you, to any man, you know. So, what was your yeah. worst experience, if you would like to share? Mm -hmm. uh, probably <clears throat> the worst was. It was also in the beginning of my, my trip in, in Baikal Lake in Russia, in Siberia. And it was 2014 and I was cycling there and it was the southernmost point of Baikal Lake, one village. And in that village, uh, all cyclists take a, a train for next 70 kilometers because there is very narrow tip road and mm -hmm. camions and trucks they are passing through so uh, nobody cycled that far and I, I i came in the evening and uh, i wanted to buy uh, train tickets but they told me it's in the morning uh, only train is in the morning and that was one policeman there and she i mean she, woman police she told me just don't come here in this town i mean village whatever because uh, there is a group of people who always try to rob foreigners. Yesterday they tried to rob some Czech people. But I didn't listen to that advice. I was too tired. And, you know, is a fate. And I'm too lazy to leave that town and then come back. And, you know. So I found near the lake, uh, I found a, a complex of bungalows and they even um, made made connection with the lady who owned that uh, with all, but I was too shy in that time to ask her uh, to give me like peace in, in her place to for camping because I couldn't mm -hmm. pay for, for bungalows. Uh, I just put my tent in front uh, of her fence and my tent is green like bushes and very small and I have pictures uh, bushes, they were taller than my pants, so it was really hard to see my pants. Mm -hmm. My bicycle was near the, the fence, you know. And at that time, I had old bicycle, I started on bicycle 40 years old with eight gears, you know. It mm -hmm. cost like $30, a friend of mine, he, he just gave to me. And uh, it was really, you know, a lot of destroyed parts of that okay. bicycle so nobody wanted to take that you know and i used to put on my bicycle when i sleep to put uh, dishes uh, in a way if you touch my bicycle they fell down you know? mm -hmm. so i can hear sound 
and it was like six in the morning, very early, because in Siberia it's freaking cold, even in summertime, you know, but they come before eight or nine, and I heard that my dishes are falling down, and I heard some voices, and I asked it, what's going on, and I think it was a mistake, because I speak Russian, if I ask it them in Russian, it would be better, but I asked it in English, and they said, like, money, money. And that's pretty tricky. And I had, in Turkey, they gave me pepper spray. I never used it before, <laughs> you know, for dogs, to protect myself for dogs, but they never used it. And, yeah, okay, case, I kept, we'll... just, yeah, just in case. <laughs> uh, and they uh, uh, kept that, when I sleep, I kept near my head, and I put my jacket and put in my pocket, and then I open my tent, he was standing like half of my head, he was like 20, 22, 3 maybe, my size, so he's stronger than me, and one meter, basically it was another guy near my bicycle, and later I tried to uh, like, uh, recapitulate what's happened, they probably wanted to steal my bicycle, but it was uh, with two chains, and when they realized it's there are two chains plus, I kept my panniers, so it's it was very heavy. Oh, yeah. And then probably they came and they saw that, and plus they waited. It was very heavy, and they and then they saw how it looks like, and they probably wonder is it worth to <laughs> <laughs> to take it? You know, can they any money for that? Because nobody wants to cycle something like that. And I didn't think, I asked him again, what do you want? And he said, money, money. And he started laughing in a very bad way, you know. And mm -hmm. it was impulsive reaction. I didn't think about it. That's true. But if you have a gun, you will use that gun. So you, you use the spray, in the end. Yeah, I use. I spray that guy and I spray another guy. And I spray them so much that my old arm was numb all day, you know, how, how much I spray them. And they start running, you know. <laughs> and they took my handlebar bag with all my belongings and they ran to the gate of that bungalow part uh -huh. of the place. Uh -huh. And I knocked with rocks, you know. I tried to call that woman, but she didn't answer. And then I saw that that first guy who was closer to me, he was coming back, probably that spray wasn't enough strong in, in many time. It, it passed uh -huh. like three years. And he was like very angry. He, you know, he was crying and he tried to, you know, and he threw a rocks to me. And then I, uh, again, like, it was in, 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 in post reaction, like, I just throw a rock on him and then I realized, come on, are you crazy? I mean, he's your size. So if he come closer, he can hit you. You're, you cannot do anything. He's stronger, you know? Yeah. And then I, uh, I mean, brain is working amazing in, in uh, such uh, situations. So I, I, I grab a, ro a lot of small rocks, you know, and they throw them to the windows of that woman place because mm -hmm. it was like two mentors. I was screaming all the time and I'm sure that she hear me but she didn't want to open because they know each other and she probably didn't yeah. want to have problems, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, and then it was about to break her windows. So she opened and that guy, he saw her and he ran away. She opened the gate. I come in. Yeah, I can work. Yeah. It was wow. probably the most dangerous situation, yeah. In the end, they didn't took anything. You were not hurt? Only no, 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 no. It was nothing. numb, okay. Yeah, when she when she opened the you know when because it was uh, house uh, was like maybe one meter higher mm -hmm. than than place we were staying, mm -hmm. so she could see her. Of course, yeah. she, they ran away because if she recognized them, you know they ha can have problems. Yeah. yeah, most likely. But, but that was because I didn't listen. I, I was warned. And always when I didn't listen, warnings, I had, or my intuition, I had problems. So good advice, always listen to the authorities or people yeah, around with yeah. this day. Even, yeah, yeah, even, yeah, many times, I, I cannot say how many times I moved my tent in the middle of the night because I didn't feel bad. I just felt bad. And then I, okay, my stuff, you know, packing your stuff with no light, I mean, with just light of your 
Um, it's <laughs> really something you don't want to do in two in the morning. But when I wake up and feel something bad, or if I cannot sleep, then I pack and I move to another place. I, I uh, just uh, learn it's better if I become like how to say that. It's better if I made a mistake and nobody was serious there, but it's better to laugh after all than to, you know, to regret because you didn't listen to yourself. So That's a good advice. Yeah. So you've been to how many countries by now? Oh, I, I, I never count, actually. I stopped counting somewhere in Asia, but it's over 50. Over 50. Over 50. I, I think it's like something 50, 55, between that. Yeah. Uh, it's in the last 11, 12 years, right? Yeah, we are now, I'm now in 12 years of my career. And by that time, have you ever came back to Serbia? I mean, I know you're coming back, but like staying longer times or what you're like? Uh... Yeah, I, I came back three times, but once I stay longer. Um, first time I came for three months in 2014 when I published the first book from the road. I say first from the road because before that I published two books. I published book when I was 25 and that was still Yugoslavia. And that was the biggest competition for writers. Uh, the famous one, Matica Srpska, organized that. You know who is Matica Srpska. Uh, <laughs> if you pass that uh, in that selection, that means that you are talented. Yeah. So I won on one of that nice. competitions. And then second book I published 10 years later. So for 10 years I, I wrote only two books and I wanted to be a writer. Eric Martin is writing his last uh, Game of Thrones. He has two books for more than 10 years. So, yeah, you're not the only one, at least that I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, that was, you know, I, I had many excuses. I wanted to write, but it was like I never did it. You know, it's not one thing is if you, if you uh, are working on book and or if you are focus on that and I, I i was doing everything else just not writing not procrastinating uh, on a professional level yeah yeah and then in 2014 when i published that uh, it was like self-publishing because it's only way to earn some money if you're not best seller writing writer and they came back um, to let's say half to my book to promote it and i made like 30 something uh, speeches I gave in, in Serbia, Bosnia, Croatia, Montenegro, Slovenia. And then after uh, all that speeches, I literally ran away from Balkans actually <laughs> from, from home from Europe and came back to Thailand where I was time because uh, I was almost four years on the road before I came back and I become kind of wild <laughs> like half of wild you know and that was the beginning of social media it wasn't Instagram yet it was just Facebook and that was like childhood of Facebook and of course I posted on Facebook but I didn't have idea how many people follows me really uh, I, I post I have my blog from very first day but I also in that time uh, publish all my blogs on B92 portal, what was very famous in that time, and a lot of people mostly, yeah, mostly uh, abroad, uh, Serbs lives abroad, they, they, they are members there, and they read me, and that was thousands of people, my gosh, and then I came to Serbia, you know, I, I, I was all the time alone, I couldn't even pay for the hostel to meet other travelers, uh, only when someone host me, you know, then from that, like, loneliness, I, 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 I came to Serbia, and then every day another city, not every, but every two or three days, you know, uh, in Belgrade, they, I, I had two or three speeches in front of 500 people. In Novi Sad, full amphitheater, you know, there are 300 of people. 
And that was like, I was talking like two, three hours and, you know, okay, I'm professor. I've been working in school. I don't have problem to talk in front of, you know, people. But anyway, it was like, come on. It's so, you know, from that loneliness time, it, it was amazing. A lot of energy and sharing and feedback, amazing. But it was exhausting. You know, uh-huh. and I really miss after three months. I wanted to go back. I, I want to be alone. <laughs> you know, I need it. And then I came back after I published Nomad, what is about Turkey in 2016, to collect money to go after I came back to, I was in Vietnam at that time, after I cycled over Indonesia and came back to Borneo and then. Vietnam again to China. I wanted to go to Japan, uh, but then uh, after Japan, I spent six months in Japan. So I think for northernmost point to southernmost. Point. Uh, although I didn't pay for accommodation, and I found way to live very cheap in Japan because it's a really good country for nomads. For nomads, uh, I spent all my money, and then I came to China, and I've been working in China. And after that, I visited Korea, and that was in basement. I cycled in North Korea, and I was cycling, cycling <laughs> up there, and cycling. Uh, cycling how was it, yeah, mention North Korea. How is it North Korea? I also read about it. I really wanted to ask you this question, and you mentioned, brought it up. Uh, I know they're like yearly. There's like hundred thousand people going touristically. That's also not so famous that people can go there. The tourists. How was being in North Korea in general? It's actually very easy to go to North Korea if you have money, you know. And uh, I, I've been teaching in 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 China, and we have like teachers. All teachers have a good salary in China, so it's very common for people who works in, in China to go to visit North Korea because it's close. Usually, you have to pay like 1,000 euros for five, seven days, or even 2,000 for seven days. It's working like you have uh, agencies uh, outside of Korea, mostly in, in China and Russia, some in Russia, and they're working with travel agencies in North Korea. They do have travel agencies in North Korea, but they all. Uh, Referred to directly to cabinet of Kim Kim Jong Il, you know, so okay. he control everything, and uh, so you apply, you choose, do you want, and then you get you have to pay like if you are not American, if American citizen or Korean citizen, then you can, apply. or if you are not journalist, if you are journalist, you have to apply for journalist. Visa, what is tricky to get, sometimes you have to wait like a couple of years to get them. I guess and to prepare the route where you can go exactly, what to oh, yeah, pay attention. So they, I think I like. they have to check, you know, their only routes, the uh, routes already exist. You cannot go uh-huh. where you want. Uh, uh-huh. I, I can tell you some story about that. But I think they have to check you if you're a journalist. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I asked that guy, I apply, uh, that was one agency from originally, owner is uh, Korean Australian couple, and I asked that guy from Australia, uh, do I have to put the time blocker? They said, no, don't do that, because they, they don't have internet, they don't know what does it mean, they don't think that you are a journalist. <laughs> okay. but they also have internet for, for uh, you know, for people who are high in that party, Communist Party. So they could track me if they wanted, but I think I, I, I wasn't interested for, interesting for them because I'm from Serbia, who care for Serbia, right? Mm. And so uh, I'm not sure do they track you. Probably if you are from some countries, bigger countries, they do. But okay. I'm sure they didn't track me, or maybe they track me, but they decide, okay, she will write about us, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you then pay a deposit and you get a link uh, for applying online and you swear there that you are not a journalist, that you will respect all the rules and things like that. And Cross my heart. It's really, 
Yeah, it's painless actually getting visa. Mm-hmm. And that's that. And then, of course, you pay a rest of money. And on a day when you fly to Pyongyang, or if you reach by, by train, which is possible from Russia. And you fly from China only, right? I, I flew from China, Beijing to Pyongyang. And on the airport, uh, two guys from the agency, North Korea, waiting for you after customs. You know? In brown and suits, customs, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they're in suits and they have, you know, badges of Kim Jong Un. Oh, Kim Jong Un, yeah, yeah uh, two two leaders. And then they give you visa. Is actually that's really good. Visa is separate. Uh, it's outside of your passport, so you don't have stickers inside. But it's good because with sticker you cannot go to Korea or you cannot go to US. There are mm. things like that in. You know, ah, sim- similar like Israel, Lebanon, Libya, they Absolutely. also yeah. each other. Or yeah, it was yeah. one time uh, recently, if you have Turkey stamp, you couldn't go to China, you know, during the war in Syria. Yeah, but they changed mm-hmm. that according to political situation. So it's really good they, they have that like separate. So okay. they give you that, but they take your passport. So from very first step you don't exist there you don't have passport you don't have anything they just show you visa and take it back and they will give you that when you leave country and then you get to agents <laughs> agents they are agents, and they speak really good the english and they educate you will be surprised well they are educate they know even greek mythology what was really like what they couldn't believe yeah. interesting and although they're they were one was only 25 and uh, you cannot go by yourself anywhere be by yourself and they don't follow you uh, why two it's always two agents i don't know really why two but i know some rumors about that according to rumors that's because they can control each other that's yeah. what i thought as well makes yeah, sense probably yeah, yeah, but they were really nice, and they were three of us in the group only. One guy from uh, from Greek, one from Australia, and me, and two of them plus this agent from Australia. So three agents, three tourists, you know. And we cycle mm-hmm. like, and they don't know anything about bicycles, you know. <laughs> and then they, I explained to them, they they just uh, this the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They bought it from Taiwan, you know. But they didn't know how to. They didn't even know how to repair like flat tire. Nothing. So, so no, they, they do have. No, they, they have a lot of bicycles in, in North Korea, mm-hmm. but they don't have. That was like trekking bicycle, you know, with very very mm-hmm. tiny tires. Okay. So they don't produce that there. And for them, they just start um, with with that tour first time. So they didn't know what they have to buy. What you know. Uh, sorry. They have, you... You brought your bicycle from China on the plane, and they no. wanted to go. Oh, no, no, you didn't. no, no, they provide you. They provide you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it. that's the problem because uh, they still. I, I guess now in meantime they learn because they everything buy from China and they have good you know relationships with China, so everything is coming from China, but they just didn't have experience in it, and they didn't know that that kind of bicycle can go and things like that mm-hmm. because they are very, very tiny tires they have to buy big uh, tires and things like that so uh, but, uh, what I want to say I published a book about North Korea and that's why I came back in 2018 and it wasn't my plan but I stayed one year all full 2019 because uh, that book I, I sold I, I had like 60 speeches even in European countries in you know, where are Serb communities, mm-hmm. and because we don't have in Serbian any book in Korea, and that so there are 300 photos in that book, so it's which we'll put know, in the link, big. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now it's only PDF, uh, I, I don't have uh, I don't have more paper issue. We'll put the, the link of the book for people can yeah. buy and read about uh, it. And check the and photos. What, they, what they try to, to, uh, to write in that book is. To give objective uh, perspective about that country, I didn't want to judge, but I wanted also to uh, show that 
there are a lot of misunderstandings uh, because I've been traveling already like six years Asian countries and there is something what is culture model in Asian countries and if you first time came to Asia and you go to North Korea without knowing that culture models okay. you will say like oh but they are happy because they are smiling all the time no no, oh, that's not good conclusion because in Asia, culture model saving face always is like this. Whatever happened, mm. it's always like this. So you cannot say they're happy because they never express their uh, real feelings. Even in their homes, they don't express that. Only if they really trust to their partner. The most important category in all Asia is uh, saving face mean always show good good attitude always smiling always be kind uh, never show anger never sh no never say no uh, never put yourself or other people in situation to they cannot uh, explain something so don't ask questions they cannot answer you know things like that and if you add on that that communist, uh, not only communist, it's like dictatorship, you know. Yeah, not like rules. Serbia and Turkey, but on a higher level, but yeah, people from the yeah, Balkans. Yeah, can, then you can have, yeah, then you have an uh, answer. Or, for example, <clears throat> what I, I usually uh, talk when I, when I, when I uh, talk about uh, Korea, like example, we, we visit one school, of course they choose school, we, we, we can visit, and uh, they brought us to, to the class, like computer classroom, and they all have like, you know, monitors and everything, but it wasn't allowed to go be behind to see what is on their monitors, you know, and they told us they learned like, uh, how to work on computers, like, Excel or something like that, and but I, I, I was teacher, right? And somehow I made to see, and that was black screens. And of course, it started immediately like it's Potem King religious, it's not true, that's yeah. fake, everything. Blah, blah. And that's I funny. came to the hostel in hotel, you meet, of course, people from another group stores because there are a few hotels there, and I share experience with some people. And they told me, oh, we also visit that school, but bad luck, it was uh, block, uh, blackout in that time. Really? Uh -huh. We were after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were working like something in Excel. They show us what they did, but then it was blackout, you know. Wow. And then I realized, you know, I judge them without knowing mm -hmm. that. Uh, because they just don't want to show you another thing, that they don't have enough electricity. Mm. You know, if they tell you uh, now we don't have electricity, that means they cannot produce more electricity. And it's not connected only with that system way of thinking. It's also connected. I've been working in China, as I said. I never heard anything bad about China or Chinese people. They never complain. It doesn't matter how, how bad is something. Only if they leave China. They, they, they can complain, you know. Asian person yeah. never complain about anything. You mean and general so Asian? In, or in general just, Asian. Yeah. I'm talking about Far East countries and South yeah. East countries. Uh, so uh, it's just not their culture model, you know. They always show it's fine, everything is fine. So that, that was also for, for those guys. So they didn't want us to tell, when I asked the guy, uh, what is problem with electricity? Because we visit, they have like hydrocentrals, big hydrocentrals. They have a lot of water resorts, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Big rivers and everything. Uh, actually, the problem is what Australian guy explained to me. Uh, they have old installations. So it's very uh, expensive now to change that. So you can see in Pyongyang, half of the city doesn't have electricity. And that was also one stupid thing. We were on 30, 30, 34th 
floor of the hotel and the restaurant was on 37, let's say, or 40, doesn't matter. So from my 34th floor, I see that half of the city doesn't have electricity and I took photos, you know, and you see it's only a couple of lights and in the morning you see when you pass there, you see they have solar panels. So if they have electricity, that's solar electricity. Mm -hmm. But uh, then you went to the dinner up there with guides, of course, and they told me like, for, it's forbidden to take photos. Okay, it's forbidden to take photos because they want, don't want us to, to have pictures of city in the dark, right? Mm -hmm. But from your room, you can take photo, the same photos, and nobody forbid that. Stupid, then. then a guy from Australia explained to us, thanks God we had him, because I ask a lot of questions, he responds me, and he explained uh, that actually uh, many rules exist to, just like that. They don't know the purpose of that rules, but they mm. still keep them. And Good about question, taking photos, yeah, it's changed a lot. Uh, just first day... You, you get very uh, clear instructions what you are allowed to do, what not. And your guide is actually your best friend. For everything you're not sure, you have to ask him because he's there to save your life. Because if you make a mistake, he will have problems, not only you. And his whole family will have problems forever. So in part, the high level... Uh, you have to be in pretty high level uh, from your grandpa from time of Kim Jong Soon, first emperor, right? Mm. In that the, uh, yeah, leader, because, so to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, leader, yeah. Uh, because <laughs> they have three social classes. If you are not, if you didn't choose right sides in that time, you have no chance in this life. Because Whoa. you know. Yeah, the caste system in uh, India. Absolutely, like casting system. So if I make mistake, my guide will have problems. That means that all his family will have problems forever, and they will never reach that level in more. And so uh, there is not like people believe. Oh, they they. I also believe. I I, I had stereotypes before I went there. I was in mood like, oh come come on, if they. Uh, if they look for my mistakes, they, they could find like thousands of mistakes, you know. <laughs> but there is actually opposite. They look hard to protect you, to protect themselves. And only what they ask you is to respect what is important to them. And mm -hmm. if you want, it's about uh, good manners. Because if I come to your home, uh, I have to respect your rules, right? If of I don't course. like, I should leave. It's not my job, my business to change and to laugh, to say, oh, that's stupid, that's ridiculous. Of course, they are stupid and they are ridiculous, a lot of things there. And of course, it's like in prison in many, many, many meanings, you know. There are some good things, they are bad. I'll never leave there. But to there to visit, then I have to respect that. And then they see that you respect that and that you accept that, they can check you more. So they check our photos only first day because there are some rules you have to use. Like if you take like photo of uh, sculpture of leaders, you cannot stay in front of them, or you cannot cut even single piece of shoes of them, or something like that. You know, so photos like that, or you cannot uh, take side photo. So only in front. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, stupid rules. <laughs> it's important for them. So they check you, you that can you do didn't Photoshop make... later, but okay. No, they don't accept it. Yeah, they don't, yeah. Yeah. And they just ask us very polite to delete the, uh, photos like that, you know, and they, they see uh, that we respect that they didn't uh, check it. And when we left country, they didn't check anything because I guess that customs already get like. Uh, report from guides before you leave country mm -hmm. and they report like oh this group was nice you don't have to check we don't uh, have any doubts about you know mm -hmm. and i wanted to about the route you mentioned um okay one day we were visiting some places because uh, this cycle bit uh, they put our bicycles in snow like 
small bus and uh, decided uh, they they gave us a drive to some place and then they uh, allowed us to cycle like 20 30 kilometers and they again pick up and put and then we visit and blah blah and it was first visiting something and uh, then we came back to the bus and i asked them for a toilet and we were already on the road so driver found one place he remember one place in the city but from that place he didn't know actually uh, how to take again a route what is allowed so we passed through some villages they are not on the route and they are real villages and now a little digression what is important for this i had in that time new phone because they uh, I, I was afraid if you have anything that is connected with South Korea ever on your phone or computer, they just take it and never give you back. Oh, no, Samsung. And so, yeah, I, I, I delete everything from my computer, the telephone was new. But I didn't think about that, I didn't know, and I didn't have like uh, any app uh, for recording. I don't know, recording audio. I don't know how. Mm. I couldn't find that, you know. And they don't have internet, so I couldn't download when I reach country. So I first day I asked them, can I record like type video, but only voice? So I will not record anything. I will keep my phone like this. And they allowed me and they use on that, you know. So I because it was too many impressions every day. So I, I needed something. I was afraid I will not remember all that. I already planned to write book about that. So yeah. every detail, everything was new for me. So I used to do this and to record my voice and impression in my language so nobody can understand me. So nice. And we were passing through that villages, right? Villages are like wars then in countryside in Balkans. With all the roofs are like from some material, I don't know name, rocks, well, because of wind. You know, uh, all houses are the same. That's the rule in North Korea. Everything belongs to government. So they gave, give you a house, and all houses in villages are the same. In the cities, all flats are the same. And you don't have proof to, to, to change anything. So no, no changing, you know, rooms, no changing anything. So you have to live in that, like, okay, two rooms, two rooms, no, no more. You cannot make any change. So uh, people were, uh, were, and there are also uh, fences around uh, quartz mm. villages, and it's really poor. It's clean, but you see it's really poor. And I was, like, recording my voice, you know, one agent was sitting behind one was the cat, and I was, and then I just realized in one moment that I have a picture here, video. I didn't notice that my phone was like this. It was like, okay, do I, am I enough brave to record this or to stop recording? And of course, I record that. They had video of all that villages, you know, and it's absolutely different what you can see allowed routes, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I record, and I was like, I didn't know what to do with that. Then do they delay, delay that or not? If they check my photos, they will find that. Anyway, I don't know. No, I, I absolutely, I have like, uh, it's disappeared from my memory why I decide to keep that. I kept that. And they brought that over the border and they showed that on my presentation. Oh. They didn't put that on YouTube. And I delete okay. that. I think I don't have more of that because if I put on YouTube, they check guides no. will have. and they will have yeah. problem why we took that way how is it possible the driver couldn't find that route and things like that and it's serious really serious thing i think it's a, it was a so. good decision <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah well, because you have to think about them they have families yeah they have you, to live there you need to be you have compassion yeah totally agree yeah I, when i hear you explaining what you see i mean Whenever we mention North Korea, it and when you describe what it is, to be honest, it's not surprising based on the news and everything. Yeah. And to some extent, looks to 1984, the book. Uh, so 
It's insane, insane. Uh, I hope it doesn't continue it to looks, be like that. Yeah, it looks like, you know, former country is actually in time of uh, huge Russia, what was the name? SSSR, yeah. Uh, USSR. Uh, communist Russia, yeah. Like uh, all those countries behind the golden, no golden, <laughs> iron curve. <laughs> they, wi they wished it was golden, yeah. Yeah, they wished it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't so big surprise for me. Okay, it's worse, but I think it's quite similar, like in Ceausescu time in, in Romania. Mm -hmm. They also cannot, they couldn't from Romania. They couldn't go anywhere, they couldn't travel, they couldn't get this, mm. I think. So uh, I think it's more for, for Western people, it's more interesting because first time probably they, they especially young people, they, they, they can mm. see something like that. But I mean, there are some good things there. There are some good things. Like? They still have good education. They still uh, respect uh, real values, you know, starting from what is proper co co uh, clothes for some occasions. You, you can see people like, you know, in some, some casual style going to theater or something like that, you know, they still keep that, uh, like, you have mm -hmm. to be in t-shirt, white, you know, that, mm -hmm. it's like retro, a bit retro. Yeah. They also uh, do hard about, they, they put a lot of them in education. Education is one of priorities for government. And if you want to learn, you can reach very high levels. For example, they provide you to your job, free courses of everything. If you want to learn language, English, we visit like English class, you know. So it can give you more possibilities in that, I mean, horrible system to to get some you know better position mm -hmm. but it's really hard for example you cannot move from place to if you are born somewhere there are very very uh, small possibilities to move from that place you have to have really good reason to apply to explain and to get permission to go somewhere to change your place of living you know? so then yeah, that's that that's really hard, I think, to live there. But it's good on that meaning that still exists some, you know. They also have what they love a lot. Okay, that's not only just propaganda. It's also, I think, uh, I found it's about psychology. I was surprised, and if you see photos, I, I kept some video about Pyongyang on my YouTube, and you can see um, like buildings in different countries, and they look really nice like new and then you come closer and you see that they are really old but they are just painted mm -hmm. and they have that that they paint every april in the year they paint it uh, it's uh, they have the uh, depression mm -hmm. so you know if you come back to nice facing the house it's much better than if you come back to gray house you know yeah. So I love that they, they, they really care about, you know. To be honest, yeah, you said they care, probably they do, but they also remind me from the story about Moldova. They have this breakaway uh, country, Tiraspol, Prednestrovlje, depending who you ask. And they like you went to USSR in 1991. It's completely the same, all like shiny and all like painted because they have bad infrastructure, they don't have the money or the needs for the better ones. So they just repaint it, and it looks like, yeah. yeah, like you travel the time back in the in the past. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. It sounds completely the same. I before. mean, a lot of fake things, but you know, if you compare, it will be nice if we also paint our houses in Serbia. I agree. <laughs> because we don't have we don't have money to be new, right? <laughs> totally agree. Bratislava did this. Yeah. There's like a Euro trip film movie. Uh, comedy and they're like oh Bratislava is gray and stuff and then I went to Bratislava years after I saw the movie and they painted all like those communist blocks in uh, pink <laughs> yellow blue so I was like oh they did try to rebrand it I don't know if it's all Bratislava or not but I saw okay 
good approach. Maybe they can also do this in Belgrade, Serbia. Some buildings definitely need some some paint. Yeah, less, yeah. less depressing. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, and after that, I I published that book, and finally I'm coming to your question. And that year, uh, I, I was in guest in many shows. It wasn't still in our country. It's a, I think not only in Serbia, uh, it wasn't still time for podcasts. Podcasts started in 2019, 2020, before it wasn't that, or region, maybe yeah. just, yeah. And, but I, I was like, uh, you know, that uh, show, it, it, it doesn't exist more, but that was famous in that time. Uh, Život Preach, mm-hmm. Tatiana Wojtekowski. Mm-hmm. She, it's kind of Oprah Winfrey show in, in our <laughs> country. Our yeah. Uh, so very, yeah, very good stories uh, about very different subjects, you know. And she offered me for a New Year show. Mm-hmm. She wanted to finish that year. New Year special. 20, 20, 20, 2018, yeah, with that like optimistic story and then of course uh, so two millions of people watch that and then started calling people started journalists they started offering me to come to be guest and i my plan was actually to go to south, south america in the beginning of 2019 but then i decided okay, it's not fine for that because still it's good for my because in seven days, I saw much more books than in three months. <laughs> Use that wave. Yeah, 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 exactly. I decided to stay, and then I, then it's happened that my new tenants, I have new people in my apartment, they, they, they cancel, so I moved back to my apartment. And it's a nice, nice year. Yeah, that year I, I decided to walk Camino de Santiago in Spain mm-hmm. uh, in summer, and I made big charity for kids on the street in Belgrade, Swedish there, mm-hmm. like safe cows for, for mostly gypsy kids, and uh, we collected really big money for them, I mean, for one year for their meals. And then I came back. Then I realized that they bought flight ticket for New Year for South America, but they don't have money. I had like 200 euros. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> yeah. And then what happened? We can imagine that year what happened. Yeah, to my, to my followers, many times they promise that I have to write one book about miracles on the road that's how we call that they're not miracles we can, we can talk about that i would like to talk about that after please this. <laughs> uh that's uh we call when like that in turkey that's when from somewhere come people who help you not because i'm snezhana and i am terrible in serbia they help you just because they are good people but for you it's like miracle because you wish something like you wish shower, you wish food, you wish something, and you really need it. It's not like you want luxury. You want just basic thing. And you really suffer, and it's really hard time for you. And then from somewhere, somehow, that appear, and you just take it, and you you have feeling that universe gave you that. And mm-hmm. I had already that stories, so I just collected stories, edit that, and publish. And then I collect money in two months to leave, <laughs> because I didn't have money. <laughs> and everything to renovate my apartment, to come in with Santiago, nobody, I, I don't have sponsors, so I support myself. Okay. And then uh, I came to Shuaia, in, in Argentina, down in Tierra del Fuego, and in, in, for New Year 2020. And since that time, I'm in Americans. And since that time, I have, like, membership on my blog. So people pay one euro a month, and they read 
all that articles, travel stories, what is not in public. It's only mm. for like exclusive material. And also I started my YouTube and Patreon. And plus I have again anything by so that's very how I support myself and some selling books. <clears throat> You answered, I had the question, right, for the people that also want to tr travel the world to see how they can finance themselves um, to follow your, your path. Uh, that's one of your ways, how you said, the books, uh, the renting of the apartment, uh, uh, the blogs, the subscription, the monthly subscription. So we all put the, we put the links from everything, as we said at the beginning, to support you for your next uh, trip. Or would you call it the trip or is it like uh, all... Yeah. <laughs> So I'm all the time on the same trip, just different countries, <clears throat> and that's uh, what people usually um, like um, cannot catch uh, because it's not so common. They always ask me, journalists always ask me, "What is your next trip? Can you tell us something about previous trips?" But that's from 2011 till 2023, 20, where we are uh, now. It's the same trip. Just uh, I change continents, I change countries. Sometimes I go back to the same countries. I made sometimes break. I mean, from okay, that was the longest break of the year in 2019. That that was once, uh, twice I came for two three months. Um, but it's same trip. It's like it's not trip. It's way of living. It's not trip because I don't have a goal. You know, it started like trip around the world but it's i didn't swear that i will cycle all the world because mm -hmm. you know i spent as much as possible in each country as visa rules allowed me and they go yeah. there and there and if you if you if you see my route it's like you know it's not like straightforward <laughs> i'm coming and going and return and you know if i love somewhere i go back you know so you're not forcing yourself, you're just following how you feel at that moment, what you yeah. want to do next. Yeah. Uh, you're in yeah. basically independent. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I Only got the I depend on, on visa rules and I depend also on prices in some countries because, for example, now I don't know how long I, I could survive in the US because it's very expensive country. So yeah. we will see. It's possible also after one month that I realize that I cannot stay there to go Mexico. Let's hope. Hey, I manage. want to say something. Yeah, sorry. I want please, to say please. about about that miracles. Yeah. Because I was wondering a lot about that, and if you ask all travelers, they have that experience with a lot of miracles, a lot of help, so unknown people, and that's absolutely, uh, absolutely honest because. All that people who help you, they don't expect anything. And they know from very first moment that they will probably never see you again. Mm -hmm. So they don't have any interest. They are just good people. And then, for example, it's happened. I will tell you two like examples and then explain what I learned. This kind of scientist explanation. Uh, for example, I was in, in Kazakhstan, and Kazakhstan is a huge country, and visa rule is uh, that uh, after one month, it's allowed one month with no visa for us, for Serbian passport holders, and after that, you cannot uh, renew your visa staying you, from the country. You have to leave country and come back to do visa run. What is name for that. Okay. And, but it's still huge, and if you don't go... Uh, if you don't uh, cycle north part where you uh, cross uh, very often uh, Russian border, and in that way you can manage to cross all Kazakhstan, but only north part. I wanted to go down to Kyrgyzstan. So that's Diagon, which is the, the longest distance. So I took a train, and that was to leave country. That was like summertime. I took like economy class, no aircon thousands of people inside you know 
no fan, nothing, and I was sweating, and I was super tired, it was like 12 hours, and I had like to change my train, like we arrived in one city at 2 in the morning, and at 8 I had another train, and I didn't have idea where I'm going to sleep that night, and I was thinking all the time in train, oh my gosh, it would be amazing to find someone to just get shower and to sleep in bed, you know, I really miss that. But in cities, it's impossible. If I'm in in village, I, I'm sure I could find that, right? Yeah. And then I <clears throat> then I uh, arrived to that city, and uh, I, I I saw on the map there is one. It was a forest, like eight ten kilometers far, and I start pushing my bicycle to leave that. Train station. It was huge, dark. I, I I couldn't find any sign, anything, and I had no idea how I ended in like one uh, like it was fence and no more roads. Just that, like you know, just someone navigate me there, and in front it was two in the morning, and guy in in uniform was sitting in front. And I spoke some Russian, and he asked me where I'm going. I asked him how to reach that forest, and he explained to me, but he asked me why I want to go there in this time. I mm -hmm. said, I'm going there to sleep. And he said, only for sleeping. I said, yes, only for sleeping. I, I, have, I need space just to stay overnight. You know? And he said, oh, just go there, up there. There is a room, you can sleep there, there is a shower. Uh huh? <laughs> and that turned out that's former um, uh, fire fire station, okay. fireman station, and it's about to to selling that building, and mm -hmm. he's just uh, saving that during the night. Nobody's up there, there are no people. There is room, and then that, that was shower. So I got shower. Like, so you need that? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you need that. That's but really miracle. Like, oh, it is miracle. Yeah. <laughs> Or, for example, I was cycling in, in Kafkas, in Sonetti, in Georgia. Ooh, Sonetti is amazing. One, yeah. I met one French guy, and we cycled together. And in that time, it wasn't the road. It was dirt road, and very, very hard road. And it was raining every day. It was raining. And we, we, we were like... <laughs> We look very easy. Like, we were hungry. We ran out of food, and that was any any store around. You couldn't find even small store, nothing. And we were talking about food. What would we like to eat? And it was like, oh, it would be so nice after Turkey. In Turkey, they have really good bread, you know, different kinds of. Bread. <laughs> and that was like, oh, it would be nice to have one big bread, you know, hot, and you just. Confused, and just got, you know, like hundred people just to, to talk about food, and then suddenly from opposite direction came a small, like camion, like truck, and we stopped and we just asked them where we can find store. Is it in next village any store? And he said no, there is no store, and he gave us like that. We didn't ask like bread. What? <laughs> How did he delivering the bread? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, come on. It's like and, a, yeah, uh, mind. I read the book. Yeah. No, no, no. See. Uh, like you did a mind order, like a Uber. Like, oh, I would like some bread. Yeah. And then the yeah. truck comes along with bread. Yeah, like that. Like that. Yeah. And for a long time, I, I couldn't explain that. And my, uh, not last, but that book I wrote in 2019, that's a collection of stories like that. And it's still available. And I read a lot of books where travelers try to explain that in this way, on that way. And uh, then I uh, ended this year, last year, <clears throat> that's a different subject. And uh, I don't want to talk a lot about that. I just want to talk about explanation. I went mm -hmm. to Vipassana meditation course, but, but doesn't have anything with religions. That's original Buddha way. Uh, of meditation so people from any religion can practice that and even teach of that religion is actually not religion of that method 
is uh, Hindu and he's still practicing his Hindu, uh, you know, rituals, but technically it's just universal. And where did you do this? Where did you do this? In, in some city in, in Mexico, but they're all okay. around the world. You can find that on site vipassana.org with two S, vipassana.org. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, they organize every, every in Serbia, we have some courses. And, uh, and everything is free, you know. So what attracts me, because I don't believe in if I have to pay to some teacher. <laughs> and you can donate if you have done. And uh, what is the story? The story is they explain you listen to, to <clears throat> discourse of uh, teacher Gwenka every night, and in one of that discourse, he explained what, uh, what, what is that about. And then I learned that that time that was 25 centuries ago, uh, Buddha and all that teachers, they realized that nothing uh, what exists, it's not really hard. That we are actually from some atomic, what is the word for chest? It's a, uh, particles. In English. Particles, yeah. That everything, even rocks, even what we think it's very hard, uh, it's mm -hmm. actually not hard, it's vibrating all the time, um, making vibrations. I heard and this. Yep. That, that's what quant, quant physics. Uh, also confirm, like scientists, they confirm, they discovered like a couple of years ago that everything adds everything vibrations. And that's what we know in all cultures. You have sentences like in Serbia, how you shine, you attract the same, right? Mm -hmm. And people yeah. know that if you're positive, you will attract, attract positive, positive things. Yeah, but we forgot what they discovered 20, 30 centuries because you can feel that when you reach that level you can feel that vibrations in your body because uh, with very very sharp observing with your breath uh, you can feel that we, we have that ability to feel but we have to focus and of course to practice that and uh, there is actually an explanation uh, if you are in really good there even you, you can find on internet a lot of graphics of uh, frequencies levels and what they mean so the highest is self-confidence then Makes like sense. happiness then you know you can see and then you have for example this uh, present day music it's on very very low perfection that's why make people you know to be angry to be rude to full of energy bad energy and things like that and then bad mm -hmm. emotions they have very low frequency you know of course, we can change frequencies if you are, if we are like doing something good, or if you find, if we find way how to handle our negative energy or negative feelings. You know, there are different, uh, many, many different ways. Like psychotherapy is like doing good things, uh, charity. You know, praying, believing in God, in Allah. It doesn't matter how you call mm -hmm. in universe. Uh, Everything what makes you to don't be like uh, just selfish and to don't be in bad mood. And then when you reach higher frequencies, then you actually make connection with all things on that high connections. And that's uh, because uh, quant physics, they discovered, and scientists, they discovered that all that subatomic things, uh, they they change all the time. In one second, they change three millions of time. So nothing is forever. We can change that. And meditation actually teach us or praying, it's the same. Yeah, I agree. Teach you to uh, become calm because you accept that everything is passing. You don't react on that because everything will pass anyway. So mm -hmm. you don't have to be upset about negative emotions, about negative feelings. True. You just have to let them go. And if you find that calmness in yourself, then you will start shining that calmness. And then you will attract that. The same. And we all have from open experience, if you are in bad mood, bad things happen to you, right? True. If you are in good mood, then 
start yeah. coming good things. You talk about the, the you said miracles. I guess because you're th thinking about some positive thing, you're not being like uh, yearning for it, wanting it really badly. You're like it will be nice. I imagine it. Uh, you kind of have this feeling and just let it go. And then it appears. Some people call it law of attraction, as you said. Some people just pray, have, and then it's all a type of a meditation. And I totally agree with your to your approach and this whole thing that you mentioned. Yeah, and you know, in all, all that, what what I needed on the road and what comes to me, uh, or any other person on the road, it's like you have in all religious books. You have examples for that. Don't don't. Don't uh, be concerned about what you're going to eat when you're going to sleep. The God, the universe, will care about that. Be like a bird. Live in present moments. You will always get. And it's always like in, in ordinary life, I'm, I, 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 can, I can bet that you expect if I have just $100 more, I could do this or that. Mm. And you need $100 to survive that month. And from somewhere that comes, right? Mm. It's always like that. It yeah. doesn't come like, uh, like thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah. You cannot use that principle to become rich. <laughs> <laughs> but for what you need it, it always comes. That, that's, that's, a, okay. that's a really good conclusion. I, I, I agree. It's also oh. about attracting good people, you know, what we told in the beginning. Yeah. Because if you, if you travel... And uh, in bad mood, you will attract bad things. But then, does it make sense to travel, right? True. True. You mentioned with the people going with you. Uh, did you meet some interesting Balkan people on your way, or any, any other per interesting person during your trips that you had like a travel buddy at some point for some track, or? Um, yeah, so because sometimes there are yeah, people, I met some who people extremely crazy. Yeah. Oh or yeah. Extremely you calm. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can meet a lot of interesting people, especially in present days. You know, uh, last couple of years it, it's become quite like trendy to be nomad and to do a lot of outdoors. You know, people live yeah. of that. Mm. I mean, they manage to live much better than I mean, <laughs> because they are <laughs> like a new generation. They they are very familiar with all that social media, you know, and how to post mm. that stuff. Uh, you can meet people. Mostly in, in uh, um, like backpackers, hotels, uh, plenty of very interesting people. Uh, I, I cycle a couple of times, I met some people, you know, when you're for a long time on the road, then uh, you don't actually, that's a, at least I don't, make agreements in advance. Because uh, you used to be alone, and you're fine alone, and of course you're a socialized person, you, you like to be with people as well. But if it's happened, great. If it's not happened, you already use it. So, uh, it's going like this. You meet someone, I meet, for example, I met one guy from Germany, Nisha, somewhere in Sumatra. We were staying in some place. And it's turned out that we are going same direction, and we had night chat, like beer and things. And okay, we decided to go together, and we cycled almost same rhythm, almost same way, and you know, with with some some adapt things. We traveled together for a couple of months, and in that time, we met French couple. And they also were very nice, and our ways also <laughs> go, go, uh, were going in the same direction. So they joined us, and that was also nice because we slept, we used to sleep in hotels every night because we rent room for three, and then one person slept down, and we share like three dollars, five dollars for each, and we have a big room and things Good like enough. that. So, and it lasts for a while, like. In Bali, they left us. They went, I don't know where. And Misha stay in one place. I stay in another place because he's a diving instructor as well. So he earned some money there. I stay in Bali to write a new book. After that, we continue again. It's happened again to continue uh, in Flores in Indonesia. And after that, I don't know, he decided to go back home or something like that. And that's how it works, you know. 
you are going together with someone till one moment, and then it's just uh, you. You learn that on the road to you know you you make very quick connections, but mm. also you don't uh, you are not really attached to mm -hmm. to another people because mm. they can go any any time. It doesn't mean that you don't feel anything. Mm. It just means that you accept uh, what is reality, what is truth. That's truth. He has his own vein. You have your own vein. And that's that. Mm. You crossed your, you your, have... your your you crossed your paths at some point, and then yeah, you just continue yeah. your own ways. And yeah, it's... that's life. I mean, that's you know, life, our, yeah. that's what I learned since I uh, started meditating. I learned that we actually. Uh, struggle and we we suffer the most because we don't accept reality we we always have things to follow our wishes we don't accept mm -hmm. what is really going on, you know and, uh, if you cannot change things that it doesn't make sense you know to try to push them to to hold them yeah. to don't leave them you know that makes that makes you to get stuck in time so you live in past you want to keep your past and you're not in present time and they're painful especially people so keep some good. materialistic stuff and they get attached oh, and that's, yeah, that's that's so cool. Cool. yeah. It, the biggest it, it, like illusion. illusion you know yeah. there is not uh, such a big difference between my way and ordinary way it's just more obviously in my way because i don't have any routine and i see more uh, much clearer things than people who have a routine see every day because you don't care when you go every day from your home to your job because you know that way but mm. you forget that could happen anything between point a and point b like can happen to me but I'm mm. all the time aware because I don't have routine and you're sleeping. That's the only difference yeah. because you have yeah. a routine and don't, you don't expect. I expect all the time. Not expect. It's not good work. I have consciousness that can happen anything. Amen. When I go to sleep in my tent, uh, I am absolutely aware of that, that I maybe will not wake up in the morning, you know, because it can happen anything yet. Yeah. To me. But it can happen to anyone. In your bed it mm -hmm. can happen. You don't know that. But you you take it as granted because you have a routine. <clears throat> the routine is something that give us uh, illusion I, I that we are safe, that we are protected, laziness, mm -hmm. true, true. And that's why we are all talking about stepping out of comfort zone, because it's real life. You see real life. It doesn't about traveling there. It's just mm. to see how things are working. Nobody of us has a warranty for anything. And as I said, to be mindful, you mentioned because from your experience, be mindful, mindful to understand what's going on, yeah. to be yeah, aware of the things, yeah. not to fall into routine, all the things things yeah. that combine. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful yeah. message. But it's very, very hard. It's very hard, of course, when you have ordinary life, you have a lot of stress. And this routine actually save you, uh, like uh, save your energy for, the, for for fighting with that stressful situations. So yeah. it's very hard to ask people to be like mindful, well, mindfulness all the time in, in mm. ordinary life. Right? While this life, uh, I cannot sleep. You know, people ask me like, "What do you are thinking where, where you cycle?" I mean, it's a long time every day. No, you don't think about anything. You cannot think, you know, I stopped before I could do like multitask things, you know, but mm -hmm. since I'm on the road, I, I'm not able more to, I, I lost that. I, I can do only one thing. I cannot do dishes and talk really with you, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. I cannot cycle and think about some plans. I'm cycling and I'm aware of everything around. I have to scan all the time, you know, to be ready for anything what what could happen. And that's kind of meditation because you're in present moment. 
Exactly. You, you sound yeah. to me like a Japanese sushi chef. You're present, you're focused yeah. on one thing, one thing only, and you're doing it to perfection. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just happened. It just yeah. happened. You, you see you that in that way. Yeah, you learn and you see uh, that only works in that way. Mm. Because it's also, you know, uh, uh, we, we always, uh, that's natural thing. We always try to take uh, less, to, to get, not to get, to, to lose less energy, to lose uh, less, uh, to put less effort. Uh, we always try to save us. That's normal thing. Even in language, we have some category we call like language economy. That's mm -hmm. why we are talking in very short forms like you know, cutting full sentences because it's not necessary, it's big effort. And mm -hmm. our bodies, our mind is working it that way. We try to save energy. Everything is about saving energy, you know. Yeah. Um, on the road you learn, you don't have so much energy. <laughs> you have to focus and to be there, and that's all. Totally understand. And that's also freedom, you know. That's, that's freedom, and that's different kind of freedom. And I'm very happy that, to me, it's happened last year. Uh, I went to one uh, tribe in Colombia. I went there to take, uh, get up <laughs> and to take some videos about that and I didn't realize that that was volunteering uh, volunteering program I didn't realize that they have like spiritual work in there not any they don't use any plants no okay no, they force us <clears throat> to meditate every day I never meditated before I never believe in things in such things you know I was all uh, Far East, I spent Famous for that. many, many time in, in temples, in Buddhist Hindu temples. I never, never, nothing touched me on that, you know. And then I came to Colombian time and they pushed us to meditate. I, I pretend that I am meditating and then we do hard work, you know. And in the evening they have something what they call a fire of circle, uh, of circle of fire. And we were all, that's what they do, like, traditionally. And they live in the same way, like, 3,000 years ago. Absolutely the same. They all wear the same clothes. They don't have real names. They don't know about their ages. They are in the present moment, not electricity. Nothing. They live in mountains. They have, like, uh, invisible border on their territory. So as a foreigner, or even as a Colombian, who doesn't belong to some of that tribes, you cannot go there. Um, but that was voluntary. Now, that fire of circle, <clears throat> uh, you talk about your biggest traumas, about your problems, about the terror, uh, because uh, you're there to find yourself who, 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 who you are, actually. And first, what happened to you there that they uh, make cut your ego, because they treat you all the same. They don't care who are you in real life. That's just your history. It doesn't mean anything for you. You can be rich, you can be poor, you can be black, white, yellow, uh, you can be smart, you can be stupid. Nobody cares for that. The only what they care about, <laughs> about is uh, your spiritual level. How good you know yourself, and what level you, you reach. And that's what was really good for me, because Happen to all friends, you know, with time. On one hand, you become like you realize that you're just one of millions of people on this planet, billions of people. On the other hand, you know, you're doing some things, people are following you, and you are like inspiring people, and blah blah. And your ego is growing. So <laughs> here you think you're something special, at least it's happened to me. And then I came there, and that was like, mm -hmm, come on, nobody gives a give shit for that, what I'm doing here, you know, in my life. And that was like, after two days, I'm going away from that place, because I couldn't handle, like, 20, 48 hours uh, people around me. I, you know, I used to have my freedom to separate, you know, and they left to close the city, but they left my tent up there, 
And they came back because I was expecting that they will get story of that uh, spiritual teacher. They call them mamos. Mamos okay. are spiritual teachers. <clears throat> so, uh, then I came back and I felt something. You have to uh, uh, motorbike uh, racing, uh, motorbike driving to that place is about 45 minutes because it's very tough terrain. And I, I was, of course, uh, I was on motorbike with the bad guy, and I felt how we are getting closer and closer to that village. I knew already that day. I felt in my stomach, in plexus, like everything refused, everything so big refusing. I didn't want to go there. Like it was so big that I wonder, come on, what's going on? Is someone going to kill me there because I never felt in my life so <clears throat> so big resistance for, for something, you know? And okay. somehow <clears throat> I decide, okay, calm down, just go there, pick up, take your tent, and then you can leave. You don't have to leave there, to, to stay there if you don't like it. But then when it crossed there, when it came there, it stopped. And after two or three days, it's happened <clears throat> that <clears throat> one night, I start talking about my biggest childish <clears throat> trauma, of course, something connected with my family. We all have families and childhood. <clears throat> and they told it. Because they believe uh, that, and you can find that in all spiritual teachings, in all religions, that we are attached with our bad emotions from past. And we carry that backpacks with nothing, with no any reason. It passed, and you have to let it go. There is what is about psychology, what is about psychoanalysis, what is about like family constellations now, a lot of uh, teachings, uh, spiritual teachings, all that talking about that, you know. And I just told about. I didn't get actually good reception on that because in that uh, fire of circle, it's a real nice thing. Nobody comment anything you say because we are in the same boat, right? And mm -hmm. only Mamos, he says something. Sometimes it's just observing. Sometimes he just gives you instruction what you have to meditate about next morning. Sometimes he says something what you cannot really understand how is how you have to connect that with your problem. If you think about of course, it was, again, for me, a lot of uh, rejecting, like, no, he doesn't know anything, that's nothing, that's fake. That's but somewhere in the middle of the night, you know, because I couldn't sleep, I just put down my perspective and I said, okay, but if he says something right, if I make mistakes, and then I start watching that from his perspective, and I realized that he actually uh, get the point that I was lying myself all the time you know, because I didn't want to see that in that way. Mm -hmm. And it happened next morning that everybody start behaving different to me. You know, I was wondering why they change their behavior. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes, like maybe because first time I show myself that I'm being like everyone before that is talking because you have to talk in front of fire, although you don't want to talk, you have to talk. So I always uh, show myself like I'm super strong, you know, woman who traveled the world. I was thinking about all my problems before. I, had, I know everything about myself. I live in present. I reach that level, not in that way, but that was meaning. Mm -hmm. right? Ego. I, almost ego, yeah. I didn't know that is ego actually talking. Mm -hmm. And then people, the second day, I asked one girl, mostly young people, very young people were there, and I asked, no, she started talking. She, she told me, like, oh, it's so funny and interesting to, to watch you, how you change yourself. I said, how do you mean I trained myself? She said, but your behavior become different since that night. And we are all noticed that, yeah? Really? And then another guy told me the same, you know? And then I realized that actually 
the change it was me, not other people. I was yeah. changed, not It's them. Not a coincidence. Yeah. And okay, I was ready for that. Those years on the road, I was preparing. Right? And after the, since that time, I start first time actually, and it is civilization, I start meditating. And uh, I start reading a lot about that. So listening to podcasts. And mm -hmm. then I went to that Vipassana course for new year, this new year. And then I learned, and then I felt firstly, and then I learned about that later. That, you know, we have like two different types of freedom. Okay, I, I was looking for freedom in ordinary life, like be free to go there, to do what we love, to, you know, to don't have any obligation you don't want and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's not real freedom. Real freedom is inside of us. And the most important freedom is that spiritual freedom. So if you uh, free yourself of pain, suffer. holding all that past uh, bad things if you are free of negativity if you are free of anger if you are free of lying making bad things in your life of using drugs of using the alcohol things like that mm -hmm. uh, you know that's real freedom that's real mm -hmm. freedom when you are with yourself you don't need anything outside To make True. you happy, no you're escape. Happy inside, just because you are alive and you're here. That's all. When traveling is making yourself happy because you're outside everything, you attract, you know, but it's still coming from outside. So I think it's, you know, maybe I actually want to believe that I. Travel all this time to find myself. What I didn't want to hear before, when someone comments sometimes, "Oh, I hope you will find what you're looking for," you know, it it always made me angry before. It was like, "Come on, I'm not looking for anything. I found everything." You know, what was ego actually? Yeah. But now I realize that I found what I was looking for. I, I found that peace. You know. And I know that is in me, and I know I have tool now how to reach that piece. And now it's just technical thing to see: Do I want to spend the rest of my life being with the, only with that piece and to dedicate my my life to that, or I can make it like uh, they actually all that spiritual. Teachings and religions, they teach you not to become monk. They teach you how to use that in your ordinary life. To yes. be yeah. happy. Don't, leave, don't go <laughs> to be a monk <laughs> if it's not necessary, if you don't really wish that. So I think mm -hmm. I will find that way. That's why I, that's one of two reasons why I start now, because after the person, of course, I felt really that I need time for myself. To see what do I want to meditate more and to just take time to realize do I want to continue this way of life? Or I want to make some changes, or maybe I want to quit that in perspective in one year, two years, mm -hmm. to go to live in my hut in the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I believe whatever you choose, it seems like you're on good on good path. And yeah, we really wish you all the best, and that you will fulfill all your dreams, and that you find yourself, and that you. And it seems like you're going doing right, quite good. When I finish some travel, I always feel like I'm different after that. Uh, I, I I feel myself changed, and. In every travel, I feel like I learned something about myself. So I was planning to ask you, what did you learn about yourself? But the topic came to that point uh, <laughs> by itself. 
But if you like to add something more, uh, I would like to hear. Yeah, all the time. Uh, I mean, I notice a lot of changes from very beginning, you know. And uh, I, I used to say, it's funny, but it's true. I used to say, I want to travel with myself 11 years ago from this position. You know, I, I, I'm not... Uh, you would I, never. I wasn't so, uh, Yeah, I, I was... <laughs> I wasn't someone I would like to have as a partner in my traveling because uh, I really didn't, didn't know a lot about uh, myself. Although I, I told you, I, I was a person from libraries and I was spiritual path, I, I thought, but I wasn't actually. You know, it was more like philosophy. It wasn't like spiritual. And then I started learning... First, what I learned, what is probably uh, the biggest lesson for me, uh, and I think I wish that a lot, I, I miss that in my previous, I used to say previous life, uh, that uh, people taught me how to open my heart, you know, because uh, with time, with all, like, disappointments in, in my life before, I close myself, close my heart. And then people on the road, they, they, they show me, you know, when someone just open the doors for you and let you come in his family, in his life, and you share their life, it's huge heart, you know, and mm -hmm. you cannot stay close inside. People give you real emotions and with no any reason, you know. And I remember exactly the moment when I felt that my heart finally started start melting, started opening, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Russia, and in southern Russia, in Caucasus, and uh, I started to, to buy class, what is Russian beer with no alcohol. Yep. And it was one girl, and she offered me to their store because they had like bread. I was looking for bread as well. That was her mom, and we start chatting, and then they offer me for lunch. And after that, they offer, that was big, really big family. And they offer me then to stay in their place to sleep, because in Russia you need um, uh, to register yourself to seven days after you arrive to country, and you need to pay like 50 euros, what was a lot of money for me. Right? If I don't stay, in, if I stay in hotel, hotel will register me. Hotels were very expensive, like 50 euros. Why mm -hmm. registration? Uh, if some some citizen, Russian citizen, register you, then you don't pay anything for that. It's just uh, guarantee mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Then they, you know, uh, then I told them about that. And then they said, okay, we will give guarantee for you, no problem. That was close, so I stayed like three days, and they did such a big thing for me, you know, they didn't know me, and we are still in touch, you know. They were like very simple people, but I told them, my story. I mean, it was only one year, it's only, looking back, it was a big deal, like one year, and I told them stories, and that man, uh, father, in one moment, I remember that, he really... I'm not sure he understood me well because my Russian wasn't good in that time, but he understood me by his heart because he told me in one moment, you're like a bird, you're free. That's what he, and it was such a mm. nice way. You know, you don't expect from patriarchal father who has like 10 children, <laughs> kids, mm. for whom family is the most important thing in life to understand. That you are alone and you're traveling and they are looking for that you are looking for something. But he understood. He felt me, and I felt in that moment for him and his wife such so, so big love, you know, because they gave me a big love. And then people uh, on that blog I mentioned, B ninety two, uh, they also start, especially uh, after that story because it was like really, really touchable. Uh, they start uh, think like, you share so nice stories about people, you know, we start believing 
again to people thanks to your stories it's wonderful what and uh, then people told me that they inspired them to do some good things uh, not necessarily connected That's with family. Nice. they open their doors for travelers they broke their stereotypes and xenophobic you know and then i uh, realized that actually for a long time i was believing and that was probably one of purpose of my traveling that i uh, learn again how to trust to people how to uh, love people uh, you know how to uh, respect uh, what they get from people you know that's a huge lesson because every time when I made like break, uh, which means when I had money to stay like separate in some room and to don't be uh, exposed on the road, to don't meet so many people, mm-hmm. then I continue. I always is again fears, you know, somewhere deep. Okay, they are deeper and deeper, you know, with time they they are showing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's still built, it's still inside somewhere. And then I notice how deep is that actually and how modern life and the disappointments I had in my life, like everybody has, right? How make mm-hmm. me like to don't feel, to don't trust people, to you know mm-hmm. to close yourself. Be close. You said. Yeah, close and that's that's the biggest lesson I learned. And uh, after that, of course, I learned because in main time I started telling many and I found myself in a situation. Then I also found out to some people who has less than I do. Then I make uh, quite often charity actions. I never planned that. Only that for when I walk uh, Camino de Santiago, I plan. Uh, but I never planned that. For example, last year I was in Ecuador and I was passing in village one school and kids were playing with uh, no ball they made ball from sweater you know they like uh, we call that Kropenia, I don't know yeah, we wanted to say shirt. that yeah yeah and well it was really like old. yeah i couldn't believe i mean my father told me about that i never saw that and okay and then i wish in that moment to to buy a ball for them but it wasn't any store i mean it it's just mm-hmm. village and it's 30 kilometers far from the city and they uh, went to that city and then i tweet on my twitter oh, guys i met that kids and i explained them and i'm going to buy some football for them if you want to join and they collect like i don't know 200 300 dollars in, in two hours and they Whoa. bought like two or three football balls and for volleyball and net for volleyball and gloves for balls and a lot of uh, candies and they took a bus back i uh, i pinned that so actually i didn't pin but uh, the owner hostel helped me to to find that school and they took a bus and of course they remember me because they saw me on the road i'm pushing bicycle it's not so common to see there mm-hmm. and they were the teacher because i i, I don't speak really spanish uh, i put in in the, they said Translate, yeah, Google Translate. I put that and they show him and when he read, he didn't say anything, you know. I have video about that on my YouTube. He just mm-hmm. did this. He hugged me like kids, of course, they were super happy. Things like that. Or I was in volunteering in Colombia in the jungle in indigenous school, and that was holiday, but still indigenous people they I mean they live around and some kids they come there because there is electricity and and, five. and that was uh, they introduced me um, the best student diana who read all books in library they have 30 books it's nothing she's like 14 something like that and she really loved reading and i asked her what do you like to read what would you like to read and she said uh, what is I think I read it on, on I read it on your on your blog. It's I think it was Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, yeah. I, I tried to yeah. and then I promised her, okay, I'm gonna buy that book for you. And then I wrote about that on my Facebook, my Twitter, and oh my gosh, 
We collect 1,700 euros, 1,000 for one book. <laughs> and wow. of course, we, uh, we bought, I organized, we bought a lot of books. Uh, they are talking about indigenous people because they are loose in their tradition. Uh, they bought for school uh, instruments, uh, like, you know, all that stuff they need, notebooks and things like that. Of course, we bought a lot of books. We bought King for her, uh, then some, okay, some balls, but they don't play a lot because they work after school, you know, in their villages. Mm. But it was amazing, you know. And then uh, I realized that they have, you know, uh, thanks to that social media and I'm exposed and kind of like influencer, uh, I, I can... Uh, give like I cannot say you know it's not about balancing but it's I, I collect so 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 many good things from people so many love so much yeah. love and so 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 many goodness and they cannot keep that in myself it's yeah. <laughs> much bigger sharing is and caring literally. I have to share yeah you just feel that you have to share and they think that's all that what I experienced on the road, what the, uh, it makes me being better person, you know, because uh, you, it's just like life lesson. It's just not something you, you decide. Okay, from tomorrow I gonna do mm -hmm. that and that. It, it just becomes natural. Because, yeah, you feel that you get so so much. You cannot. You don't have enough space in yourself for that. Yeah. And you have to, you just uh, want to do, and then I time in this situation to help to someone, and that was like, I, I felt like, wow, I'm now on the other side. It is really mm. fulfilling when you do something such a small for you, and you see that's a big deal for that person, you know? Mm. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's a really amazing thing. <laughs> that, that's goodness, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anna, would you like goodness. anything else? Uh, well, actually, I I had some questions, but we we all covered all of them <laughs> actually. Yeah, I will say from my side. Uh, just to wrap it up, um, what would you say to future generations or to any other age group? Uh, as advice to pursue their dreams is it uh, travel the world is it whatever like how would you like sum it up and what would you tell them uh, I'd like to give advices you know uh, I think the most in, I, I can say what I feel and what I learned mm -hmm. that the most important thing in our life is uh, to find why, why we are here what is our talent? What is, you know, talent is something what is given to us. It's not something if you have, and we all have some talents for something. And, mm -hmm. you know, there is one story in the Bible when God gave two talents what are money, actually, that's mm -hmm. the name for money, to two believers. And he said, that's for you, I will call you back in one year. And he didn't give them any instructions. First man, he just uh, rigged in the in the ground some some you know hole and put money and mm -hmm. like I want to save this to show to my God next year that they save this you know. Another guy starts selling. He bought something and sell and make more money and resell and make you know a lot of money. Mm -hmm. The one year God called them back and they repair what they did and then. God gifted again this guy who makes much more from that money. And then first guy, he asked him, but why you, I mean, I save your, your talent. I save what you gave to me. But, and then God says, uh, like, no, I give you gift. You're gifted. You have to share that gift. You cannot save that gift only for yourself. Your purpose is to share that gift. So uh, we all have talents for something. It doesn't matter if someone is talented to make shoes, 
some talented, I don't know, to, to you know, like uh, uh, street policeman in the 80s in <laughs> Belgrade, who was famous by how he, how he made that movement, I, I, like uh, dancing. I remember him dressed in all white and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah that's talent. Directing and the traffic. He made, absolutely. And it's the most important to, to find that because we will be happy if we find that. Because if you do, uh, I don't say it has to be your main job. Maybe you cannot mm -hmm. live with that and you have family. So, but don't forget on that. You can do that like a uh, hobby, like mm -hmm. a second job. Uh, because if that makes you happy, then you will be happy. If you're happy, people around you are happy. Uh, happiness makes you uh, to be a better person, you know, not many happiness mm -hmm. the, the most uh, the most kept, the happiest people i met are not rich at all they're usually very yeah. poor people but they have love because that's about sharing sharing is love you share your talent you share yourself through it. and you appreciate things what you have also, so and then things also uh, people around you if they are also happy like you, they will also be inspiring to do what they want to do, in meaning not mm -hmm. hurt anyone. We are talking yeah. about good things. And then it's about, you know, sharing and we all fit and that's energy, good energy, and you're happy. Of course, you will have all these problems. I have a lot of problems. Everybody has mm. you, you know why you are doing that. You know, that's worth because you love that. You know, we always have to, let's say, pay some, some, some price for what we choose in our life. If you choose to be normal, you will very hardly have family or groups or something like that. If you choose to have family, you will probably, you couldn't go for a long time somewhere. You couldn't be like extreme sportsmen or whatever. You have to care about your family, right? You have responsibility. Uh, but if you uh, if you choose what you really love, then price you pay uh, will be still uh, lower than satisfaction you get. So for me, it's still worth what I'm doing. If it's mm. your biggest dream to have good family that's amazing thing I, I think probably is nothing better in the world than nothing is worth like that but yep. if you choose that then don't complain why you don't live as a nomad you can't do you have you can't mm -hmm. have both just 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 be conscious about why you choose that and do you choose your life because you you want that or other people want you to do that. Don't do what mm. other people want you to do in your life because you will never reach happiness. Definitely. Definitely. Stick to your decision. If it doesn't work, okay, be bold to change it, but at least stick to it and don't have like second thoughts about it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you, Sneja, so much. We could talk like for days and days. You have like so many yeah. stories, so many countries. We try to sum it up uh, and to share with our audience your experience. Let's hope uh, uh, in the future, uh, hopefully, that we can have another session uh, based on your future travels. Uh, and for all of our audience, whenever they want to ask something, they can find you on the links from your site. Uh, and also they can write us uh, in the comment section. So, yeah. Thank you once more. This was a really pleasant experience. Um, yeah, hope to see yeah, you soon and good luck with your travels. Thank you so much. I actually feel bad to end this because it was <laughs> such a good uh, conversation. Well, thank yeah, you. Thank too. you again. Thank yeah. you for nice your offering. Again, like. yeah, thank you. yeah. And thank you to listening to me for such a long time. <laughs> It was a pleasure. No, we, <laughs> we didn't. Definitely. We, we didn't notice, to be honest. I hope our audience will will be the, the same, the, as equal, as we were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you once more, and uh, good luck with your travels. Thank you, and I wish you uh, a lot of 
like uh, subscribers and <laughs> your channel grow up because I think I love your concept, what you told me, you. how you imagine that, your vision. So I hope it will Thank be you. recognized like my like good Thank thing. You. Thank that you. Ocean it means, you. Yeah. Yeah, it means a lot yeah. to us. Thank you once more. Bye-bye. Ciao.